you just came back from China and you said you were struck by the degree to which the Chinese model is working and the American model is not. Quite frankly, China is the future. China is the future, that's where growth is. China is the model for all developing nations in the world. My hope is that many countries will follow the model of China. The Chinese model can work. There, uh, a sense of, uh, you know, the Chinese model has worked and the American model has not. Let's get one thing straight. Anything labeled the Chinese model feeds off of destroying personal liberty, free will, and the ability to pursue your own success. It does not belong here. Which is why what China is currently doing, technology, surveillance, and AI, should chill you to the bone. Especially since our global elites are already following in China's tech footsteps. We can pick up emotional states like are you happy or sad or angry? We can pick up and decode faces that you're seeing in your mind. All of that could be decoded in the form of a simple wearable watch that can pick up that activity. But upcoming technology goes far beyond tracking your brain activity at work. Tonight, I will show you the latest artificial intelligence that may soon become commonplace throughout American society. And I'll show you how it will fundamentally transform your entire life. Tonight, the AI revolution is here. How AI will transform your world and everything in it. Wow, that sounds scary. Hello, America. Could I just start with a little song? Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope roam where never is heard a discouraging word. I'm sorry, these are dangerous animals. Uh, uh, and the sun is out and shiny all day or something. I don't know. It's, uh, I think that should be our national anthem. Now I've cut those nasty Texas horns off of these sheep. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about ranchers and sheep. Okay. And I think that song, uh, keep that in mind. All the time. What is it? What does it mean fundamentally to be American? We came here. Our whole society is built on ownership and being free. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope run free. Okay. What is happening to our society right now? Well, there are two kinds of people. And there are sheep. And these are spotted sheep. They're definitely not cattle. These are definitely... Cattle would have horns. Let me brush that horn off. Um, these are sheep. And at one point, the sheep were all like, we're free, we're free, we can go wherever we want. And then the rancher, for the sheep's protection, decided to put them in a pen. Okay, But they're still free to roam around in the pen, but not out here. It's dangerous out here. And the farmer might have had a really good, you know, the best of intentions. I mean, he's going to eat them. But, I mean, until he eats them, uh, you know, he'll take care of them. So he's protecting them. He's being a good rancher. Who's a good rancher? You are. Yeah. Now, if there's a storm coming, as I am a rancher, what do I do? If there's a big storm, because storms freak the little animals out, they're like, oh my gosh, and they could, I mean, they could, if they had horns, they could kill each other. So I don't, as a good rancher, I don't want that to happen. So I take them out from the pen, the little fence that I put around them, and I immediately put them in here. And I'm like, come on, little cows. And they don't want to go in there. But I know best because I'm the rancher. So I, come on, little cows. I'll do anything I can to get them in here and then just jam the, sh the doors closed. See? It's just that easy. And I'm doing it with good intention. I am going to eat the animals, yes. But I want to protect them, okay? And I even have, it's a farm, so I have wind power on the... Well, some assembly required. And, uh, and that works probably as well as wind power does. Okay, 
Only reason why I wanted to talk to you about this is because sheep and ranchers. Sheep and ranchers. Why would people put them in a pen? I can honestly say because I'm trying to protect them because they're dumb cattle or dumb sheep. Okay? Set that aside for a second. The world is about to dramatically change. I've been talking about this since the 1990s. Um, this is one thing that has fascinated me, the coming technology. And it is time to tell you now, um, I have told you this is coming. We are now walking through the doorway. We are at the door and we're halfway into the house. Once we get into the house, it will be breathtaking. But I want you to understand everything I'm going to show you is here. And the only way to stop it is to decide, am I going to go there or not? Technology is racing way beyond what we're prepared for. We are babies in a bomb factory. It is lapping government's ability to figure out what to do with it. And that's assuming government is on the side of the people, not the ranchers, who are going to eat you. But don't worry, we're taking care of you first, all okay? right? The World Economic Forum is fast becoming the human version of those big annual tech or auto shows that you get a preview of the latest innovations. If you want to preview coming attractions for humanity and you, all you have to do is watch the WEF's Davos conference. We did so you didn't have to. Let me show you what I mean here. This is from a seminar at Davos last month by Duke professor uh, Nita Fer Ferhani. Watch. You glance at the program running in the background on your computer screen and notice a now familiar sight that appears whenever you're overloaded with pleasure. Hmm. Your theta brainwave activity decreasing hmm. in the temporal regions of hmm. your brain. Hmm. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over uh -oh. the past few hours. Right. You can see your stress levels rising mm -hmm. as the deadline to finish your memo approached, right. Right. causing right. a peak in your beta brainwave activity right it. before an alert popped alert. up, okay, hang on. telling you to take stop. a brain break. Did you notice what it said on the screen right there? Brain break. You're, you've got to have a brain break because you're getting fatigued. But it also says required. Required. The little monitor goes off. Hey, you're getting too stressed out. Brain break required. Okay, so then what do you do? Watch. Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, oh, no. whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, right. given the policy against intra-office right. romance. Right, there's policies. But you can't help fantasizing wow. just a little. Oh, that t-shirt. But then you start yeah, to worry policies. that your boss will notice your amorous feelings uh -oh. when she checks your brain activity. Hold it just a second. So wait a minute. Now I find out that there's somebody in another room watching everybody's brain activity. But I'm just daydreaming about that guy. There's no way he's going to, I mean, they're not going to know that, right? Watch. Your attention back to the present. Mm -hmm. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter, oh, thank goodness. which have earned you another performance bonus. Yes. When you arrive at work the next day, uh -huh. a somber cloud has fallen over Ooh. the office, along with emails text messages, and GPS location data, the government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. They have compelling evidence that one of your coworkers has committed massive wire fraud. Not me. Now, they're looking for his co-conspirators. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your coworker and the people he has been working oh with. Oh my gosh. You may be surprised to famous. learn that it's a future that has already arrived. Huh. Everything in that video that you just saw is based on technology that is already here today. Mm. Artificial intelligence has enabled advances in decoding brain activity in ways that we never before thought possible. Wow, that what sounds think, exciting. What you feel, it's all just data. Data that in large patterns can be decoded using artificial intelligence. Wow, that's a good thing. Because, you know, I talked to Ray Kurzweil back in the early 2000s, and I said, you know, uh, people are alive. Um, and uh, he said, it'll never be death, because we'll just download you. And I'm like, that's data. And he's like, that's what people are, data. 
Ah, they're seeing it now too. Oh, that's great. You're not a unique person with a soul, wonderfully created in the image of God. You're data, and I like to keep you right in here. Now, did you hear the, the evil danger in that worldview? You're reduced to data. You can be hacked and reprogrammed, or reprogrammed when necessary. If your actual thoughts can be decoded and exposed, well, then you'd be stripped of your humanity. You're just a pulsating cell, a blob plugged into the matrix. You're sheep, and we will eat you. But right now, you're useful. Grow some more sweater stuff for us, will ya? Now, who is she talking to here? Well, good news, it's an audience of ranchers. These are corporate leaders worried about optimization. How are they going to make the next buck? How are we going to become more efficient? Well, if you're one of them and you're worried, how do I keep my workers at work and my worker population under control? Well, this is it. George Orwell wrote about thought crime in his novel, 1984. But even he did not dream of this brainwave technology that is on the market and available today. This is a solution tailor-made for ranchers. Ah, the sheep are plotting something. It's a way to control those dangerous thoughts that sheep have. You won't own your thoughts and you'll be happy. Huh. You know, I remember a little thing when, remember when the WEF, that guy wrote, you know, the little opinion piece, and he was like, hey, uh, I don't own anything, it's 2030, and I don't even own my thoughts or my dreams. There is no such thing as privacy, but it's worth it, because it's safe. Mm. That's what they're talking about. Nothing, even your dreams. Now, I want to show you the part where she explains what this tech already can do. What you're seeing here is my brain activity while I'm wearing a simple it's device beautiful. like the one on the right. Right. We're not talking about implanted devices of the future. <laughs> I'm talking about wearable devices that are like Fitbits for your brain. Mm. Using consumer wearable devices. These are headbands, uh, hats that have sensors that can pick up your brainwave activity, earbuds, headphones, mm. tiny tattoos that you can wear behind your ear. We can pick up emotional states like are you happy or sad or angry. We can pick up and decode faces. Mm that you're seeing in your mind. Simple shapes, numbers, your PIN number to your bank account. I wonder if they can read my face right now. What is it Glenn Beck is thinking? And I have my tramp stamp tattoo on the back of my ear too. Okay, so using AI, you can decode faces you're thinking of. It can figure out who you're secretly in love with. It talks later about how great this is gonna be for dating. The PIN number to your bank account. But don't worry, because it doesn't require creepy implants. It's cute, totally wearable. And it comes in your favorite colors too, I bet. Notice how she relates it to something you're already familiar with by calling it a Fitbit, but for the brain. Then she goes on to talk about security. How you'll need to keep this on and use it to keep you safe. A simple wearable hat that has embedded electrode sensors that would pick yeah, up brainwave yes. activity yeah. and give a score between one to five mm. to help the employer and the employee know what stage of alertness the person was experiencing Amen. and whether or not they were starting to fall asleep. Now you might think, okay, we have driver assist technology in cars yeah, already, yeah, why yeah. do we need this? Right. It's because this happens much sooner, mm. much more accurately, and it gives you the real time information mm -hmm. that you need mm -hmm. in order to make choices to intervene before a person is perilously exhausted. And we uh, as a society should want that. You know, we should want a technology we, that enables us to be safer. Amen, safety first, that's why I put them in the barn. So this is classic ranger talk right here, telling you what you should want, and it's for your safety. By the way, those hats are already in use in factories in China. So the person behind the glass can like, uh-oh, Wang Nun is uh, getting a little sleepy, and it gives you a little jolt. Isn't that great? China is the new model, you know. This is how technology will be justified and sold to keep you safe and create safer, 
more effective workplaces. But you know where this leads, right? It leads to two places. One, efficiency in the workplace. We got to keep them moving. It will always be monitoring so it knows when you're paying attention, when you're asleep, when you're awake. It's Santa Claus from hell. It'll shock you or nudge you back to work. That's great. But it also has the extra added benefit of being ESG and CRT compliant because our culture demands compliance with the far left agenda now. It is their religion. We just need some incense. Recently in Georgia, a police officer was suspended for making a Facebook post supporting traditional marriage. How dare him? He received a written reprimand from his department and he decided to resign. Good for you. Now imagine if they had this brainwave thingy instead of having to go through the social media post. Todd, uh, we've noticed in your brainwaves here you're having thoughts about, dare I say it, traditional marriage. You really need to get back on the program. Just give Todd a little shock and he's back to thinking about rainbows and drag queens and, and all things that good little sheep and cattle think about. By the way, if you spend any time online, you have a personal file already that is far more dangerous and extensive than anything J. Edgar Hoover could have wanted in his wildest dreams. Google collects 39 different data points on individuals, more than any of the five big tech companies, but they're gathering it too. But it's never really quite enough. You've heard about the Library of Alexandria. Oh, is it going to be a history lesson again? I hate history. It was massive. All of the books and knowledge of the entire ancient world, all in one library. It was a wonder of the world. According to futurist Kevin Kelly, the data on you will fill an average of 320 of those libraries. But I don't have that much to tell. Oh, yes, you do. And there's more of you to be captured yet. And the capturing of this next data allows you to control and be right in this safe little barn. And you don't have any fingers, so you can't open anything up with doorknobs. The next frontier is virtual and augmented reality. Oh, it's sure, it's all fun and games. Until it's used against you. Watch. With AR glasses, I think that the key here is to communicate with our computers in a way that is intuitive at an entirely new level. It's great. The wrist is a great starting point for us technologically because it opens up new and dynamic forms of control. Yeah. This is where some of our core technologies like EMG come into play. Right. Neural interfaces, when they work right, and we still have a lot of work to go we here, do, Ty. feel like magic. Oh, it is magic, isn't it? It's magic. It's amazing how magical these magic devices really are. Notice you got the watch, kind of like a Fitbit. Remember she said it could be right on your wrist and it could monitor everything. Anyway, but it has one of those things too, and it's next level technology. It's a device being marketed that you're gonna want the big tech sucking more information out of your soul because it feels like magic. Later this year, Apple is set to release their version of this magic, their first AR VR headset. It will use internal and external cameras to track your eye and hand movements. And they're just gonna do that because it's easy to manipulate, you know, when there's a giant pyramid there in the room that you wanna spin. So you'll be able to do it and it'll project it in real spaces. Or if you're in another room with other people, you can call a friend on your headset or your glasses and it will look just like they're standing in the room with everyone else. These headsets, to start, are $3,000. Well, it's like a big screen TV. That's gonna come down. Eventually, it's gonna be so cheap, everyone will have one. Apple is relatively trustworthy with your privacy compared to the other big tech companies, but that's not a very high bar. Uh, they really stand out when it comes to tracking your activities on their devices. They just don't share it that we know of. Now imagine the glut of tracking data that they will get from just a couple of weeks of someone using their, their new headset. Tracking every single eye and hand movement. What that means, when you go to a website and you see a beautiful woman or a hot guy, whatever, 
you know, or it could be a, a magical unicorn that's neither male or female. I don't know, whatever. When you see that come on the screen, where do your eyes go first? What is it you look at? What's the second thing you see? Let's just use this for your perfect person. You're looking at a woman and you're like, holy cow, and your eyes go right to where your eyes always go, and then it goes someplace else, and then eventually maybe it makes it to a face. I don't know, it's up to you. But I'll know all of that if I can just track your eye data for just a few minutes. I will know everything I need to know about you. This kind of tracking will know you better than you know yourself. You merge all of that personal data with AI and you have a perfectly catered experience every single time. And that experiment and experience can be used two ways. It can give you a great experience or it can give you this great experience that changes you on the inside. Or until you step out of line, you know, you step on something you shouldn't, look into something, think something. You make a social media post about traditional marriage. You tweet something skeptical about the latest vaccine and the federal agency really needs compliance from people in certain <laughs> So it leans on Apple. It cracks open your massive data file, which is already over 300, uh, sorry, was it 300 or 3,000 of those libraries, okay? The left's favorite wall is the supposed wall separation between church and state. But what about the wall that separates state with big business and big tech? Oh yeah, that, that, that doesn't exist. Well, what could possibly go wrong here? Because remember, the sheep are in the barn. Well, here's the Davos brainwave lady once again. Done well, Done well. neurotechnology has extraordinary promise. Oh. Done poorly, it could become the most oppressive technology we've ever introduced in a wide scale so, across society. That's fantastic. So we're not really, I mean, we don't have to look into it. It, it done well, but you got all the big governments involved in it. So done well, it's going to be fantastic. Done poorly, the most oppressive thing men have ever seen. Oh, well, these experiments usually go well with governments involved. I mean, I don't think we're rolling the dice too much. I'm willing to bet it all on red, aren't you? We already have a shining example of how this is being used to oppress people. And I'm gonna show it to you next. You know, I didn't even get to the, I didn't, I don't even have time today to talk about how they were taking the woolly mammoth and they're gonna grow one in a Petri dish. It's gonna be great. What could go wrong, Jurassic Park? What could possibly go wrong? All right, I wanna to talk to you about good ranchers. Now, good ranchers are the ranchers like me. I take care of my animals. I feed them only the very best. They're grass-fed, they're open on the range. Yes, I do kill them and cut them up and sell them to you as steaks. But I can't sell them to you because I don't know you. But there's a lot of ranchers here in America that are good ranchers. They're American. They have American beef, unlike about 85% of the grass-fed beef now that's in your grocery store, has a little sticker with a flag on it. Product of the USA. It's not true. It's not true. 85% of it comes from overseas. Please support the good ranchers. Probably not the show to use ranchers, but they're different kinds of ranchers. Use the promo code BECK and you'll save $30 off your meat. Now, if you want the best meat, the best chicken, all from here in America, and you want to support our local farms, our local businesses, Bill Gates doesn't do business with good ranchers. Hmm? Okay? Snag $30, uh, $30 off with my promo code BECK at goodranchers.com. It's a different way to buy meat, the best way to support our good ranchers here in America. Goodranchers.com. We have to construct the world of tomorrow. It's a systemic transformation of the world. So we have to define how the world should look like, which we want to come out of this transformation. The Chinese model is certainly a very attractive model for yes. quite yes. a number of countries. Oh, Klaus, thank you for never failing to deliver the creepiness. You know, China is the model. 
Uh, China's a model, really? Because I don't like that model. That's the progressive elites around the world. They've been saying it for years. So for the moment, let's take them at their word. If China is the model for the world, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's coming for humanity? Well, first, there's the left's fascination with Chinese cities, how they're redesigning them, showing the rest of us rubes how to be civilized. The top feature of these cities is their massive surveillance network. It's estimated that half of the one billion surveillance cameras in the world are in China. All of that surveillance is enhanced with artificial intelligence software because metadata, you can't tell anything. But once you can get down to the granular level and AI helps you do that. China's President Xi uh, said that he wants China to achieve AI supremacy by 2030. According to a report in The Economist, his strategy includes, quote, an unprecedented rise in the number of new tech companies. The government is nurturing thousands of groups, big and small, in the fields of data science, network security, and robotics. One Chinese city registered over 2,500 new AI development companies in 2021 alone. A northern Chinese city has registered over 860 new companies, all focused on robotics. The showcase of China's strategy is a brand new city called Zhangon. It's about 60 miles south of Beijing. You know, you just hang a leg. The uh, government has been building it from scratch over the past five years. President Xi has called the city his, quote, personal initiative and part of his thousand-year plan of national significance. Yavo! China's city of the future has been described as three cities. There's the city on the ground, the city underground, and the city in the cloud. According to the Foreign Policy Report, the city in the cloud is the city's, quote, digital twin, a virtual copy that is being built alongside the actual city's construction. The digital twin is supposed to allow for algorithm-driven management of traffic and urban systems relying on pervasive surveillance technology. Now, the report in The Atlantic says, quote, server farms across China will soon be able to hold multiple angles of high-definition footage of every moment of every Chinese person's life. Wow, we won't have to bring a camcorder. Not only will they have the footage, they'll have every detail, every stat, every single fact. Indeed, the city won't be the only thing that has a digital twin. You will too. By the way, digital twins are already use in places like Facebook and Instagram. They use this while you're sleeping to figure out how do we get that person to do what we want them to do to engage with our app? So your digital twin never sleeps. Working 24 hours a day, giving them even more information on how to manipulate you. George Orwell, 1984, on steroids. The new city is also the new testing ground for China's central bank digital currency, which will allow the government to track all consumer transactions. Here's what the city in the cloud is ultimately about, according to the foreign policy report. Quote, the city's design has social engineering goals. I bet they're not trans people in libraries. It calls for the cultivating of a new Zhang Gong person um, that is healthy, healthy of mind, noble character, artistic temperament. Huh? This plan would recenter the Communist Party's presence in everyday urban life while streamlining and modernizing the image of government bureaucracy. Now, who's, who's to say the Communist Party needs any recentering in Chinese life? I mean, not far beyond me. Their social credit system has teams of undercover inspectors that go around China grading cities on all kinds of things in order to be considered an official civilized city. To earn a good grade, quote, streets must be spotless, traffic orderly, residents should exercise, donate blood, support acts of justice. Perhaps the top requirement is the city do nothing to embarrass the party. Amen. Wouldn't you be pissed if like somebody did something that embarrassed a Republican? Well, sign me up for this utopia. It's got clean streets. Big Brother, watch it. I don't have anything to hide. I don't have nothing to worry about. It's those people that should worry. If you're lucky, you might even be able to live at work. What's it like to live where you work? Yeah. 
For most of us, that's unthinkable. Why? But. But imagine living and working at one of the biggest factories in the world. Wouldn't that be great? A workplace the size of Monaco. Wow. For these 17,000 employees, it's reality. They come from all over China, seeking a brighter future at this factory called Yupa. Workers craft coffee makers, irons, and electric grills in staggering quantities every single day. But Yupa is more than a steady paycheck. It's home. Oh. People get married here. They send their kids to school here. But the work never stops. Isn't that great? Oh my gosh. And sometimes you even get to live at your factory involuntarily. Yeah, they could just say, hey, you should go. And you're like, please, I want to get married. I want to wear one of those snappy numbers. Last year, during one of Chinese regular zero COVID lockdowns, 5,000 Shanghai workers were made to sleep on the floor at China's largest auto factory just to keep production rolling. That's efficiency. And if you don't like your pay and working conditions under the zero COVID regime, well, you could just get beaten and detained. You know, just like the workers did three months ago at the largest iPhone factory in the world. Speaking of phones, the Chinese government has a little regulation on that. It requires every person signing up for a cell phone service to have their face scanned. So now all of the photos, all that data is attached to specific people's faces. Do you remember the brainwave decoding technology I showed you e earlier? Think how easy it is to find a mate. Chinese companies have been using it on their workers for several years already. China's the new model, and China has found some other ways to use this. For this fifth grade class, the day begins with putting on a brain wave sensing gadget. Mm. Students then practice meditating. The device is made in China and has three electrodes, two behind the ears and one on the forehead. These sensors pick up electrical signals sent by neurons in the brain. The neural data is then sent in real time to the teacher's computer. So while students are solving math problems, a teacher can quickly find out who's paying attention and who's not. A report is then generated that shows how well the class was paying attention. It even details each student's concentration level at 10 minute intervals. Isn't that great? You'll be able to go, hey dummy, you're going to go work over there, but you paid attention. You get the good job. You'll get the uniform and everything. China is in overdrive, experimenting with unprecedented tools for social control using AI. And we're just about to step through that door. Last year's China's National Science Center published an article and a video describing an AI system that can access the loyalty of Communist Party members. They can... Uh, are they really? They analyze facial expressions and brain waves. The tech will be used to help members be, quote, grateful to the party, listen to the party, and follow the party. Hey, man, brother. Party members are already required to use an indoctrination phone app called Study to Make China Strong. You earn points by reading inspirational quotes from President Z watching videos of his speeches, and taking quizzes on communist heroes. Now, the app has been called Z's high-tech equivalent to Mao Zedong's Little Red Book, but, I mean, how many millions of people did he kill, right? I can't even count. Uh, and, of course, the app has a backdoor that gives authorities access to the phone user's messages, your photos, your contacts, your browsing history, text messages, your emails. Um, it can even activate an audio recorder without you having to push a button or even think about it. Very soon, AI technology will outstrip people's ability to resist their government. When every possible activity is monitored and logged, and even your thoughts and your dreams can be decoded, any kind of freedom movement that can be snuffed out before it begins, that is the China model. Now, after the break, I want to show you more ways that technology and AI are changing life as we know it. Now let's say, let's say, that you're not happy in the barn, okay? And you're like, I don't wanna be in the barn. I don't even wanna be in the pen. I wanna be 
over here on the roof with a snowblower because it didn't have a warning for me. Oh, now he's dead. See what happens? But not necessarily if this cow has a global uh, a medication supply of like, you know, antibiotics because somehow or another he fell into a pool of bacteria. And now this cow's like, I got to get him. I'm sure, every bone in his body's broken, but he's got bacteria. I need something, you know, like uh, amoxicillin. Can't have it. Can't do it. The cow pharmacy out. They're like, hey, well, supply chains are down. You know what I mean? You should have one uh, just in case of a disaster, like you're blowing snow off the roof. Oh, now, see, now they need a Jace case, too. I'm talking about the Jace case from Jace Medical. Great way to keep yourself prepared for the worst, all right? Pack of five different courses of antibiotics that you can use to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, uh, UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and a whole lot more, okay? Great way to be ready for shortage, should they happen. But what could happen? Supply chain, it's fine. And perfect for traveling or blowing snow off the roof of your barn. Should have been inside the whole time. But if you're not, you might want to go to jacemedical.com. Jacemedical.com. Enter the promo code BECK at checkout for a discount on your order. It's promo code BECK at J-A-S-E medical.com. The world is changing at breakneck speed. The video that was released by scientists two weeks ago, uh, watch this. This is a miniature liquid metal robot in the shape of a Lego figure. They coax it out of the cage and then bring it back together and it reforms in its, watch this, original shape. I believe this is the same concept of the famous liquid robot character in Terminator 2. I'm just saying. Then there are the incredible advances in deep fake technology. I first started really warning you about this five years ago. At the time, it could still mostly, uh, you know, you could dismiss it um, with the naked eye. Now it's a different story. Let me give you two examples. This one is not Tom Cruise. I'm going to show you some magic. It's the real thing. <laughs> okay. It's not the real thing at all. And it's all fun and games until you have an actual war situation or when it really matters. Russia has produced a deep fake video of Zelensky telling the Ukrainian troops to surrender. Now here's the good news. It's a really bad deep fake. Okay, but this is terrible quality, but good enough that you can see the extreme danger where this is headed. You will not be able to believe your eyes. The technology is moving way too fast for lawmakers to keep up. Let me give you an example closer to home. An American facial recognition company called Clearview AI has created an application that can take a photo of a person and link it to all other public photos of that person. The Clearview database has over 3 billion photos they claim to have scraped from millions of websites. The New York Times says Clearview's database, quote, goes far beyond anything ever constructed by the United States government or Silicon Valley giants. The same report says that this Clearview AI technology includes, quote, programming language to pair it with augmented reality glasses. Users would be potentially be able to identify every person they saw. You're walking down the street and you can go look at a mob and go, activist at a pro uh, protest, I know who that person is. I know that stranger on the subway. I know her name. I know everything about her now. You can know everything that you didn't know, but you're getting it through Clearview AI. Wouldn't that be great? Guess who's using Clearview AI already across America? Police departments. According to a report in Wired last year, quote, across most of the U.S., neither police nor prosecutors are required to disclose when facial recognition is being used to identify a criminal suspect. In 2016, the Georgetown Center on Privacy and Technology said the police in most U.S. states had access to the tech and that photos of about half of U.S. adults were already in the facial recognition database. Hey, by the way, have you gone through the Clearview line at the airport? Because it's great. Everything is changing because of AI. You've probably heard of chat GPT by now. GPT stands for Generative 
pre-trained transformer. It's a website that uses AI to respond to requests. You can ask it to write an article about something, a song, jokes, almost anything. It's one of those rare times when something truly comes out that gives you a glimpse of how things are about to radically change. It was launched last November by a company called OpenAI. OpenAI was started in 2015 by Peter Thiel and Elon Musk and Reid Hoffman and many others. Uh, Elon left OpenAI's board in 2018, but after two full months of operation, ChatGPT already has 100 million active users, faster than Instagram and TikTok to get to 100 million. Microsoft was already an investor in OpenAI. Last month, they committed another $10 billion to it. Microsoft plans to incorporate AI, like ChatGP, GPT, into all of its products. And a partnership is even have Google scrambling in what CNBC calls a code red effort to respond to the launch of ChatGPT. So this is going to be part of their um, search engine, which is great because you're going to be able to search. And you know how you get all the list of stuff? You're only going to get one, but it'll be tailor-made for you. So you'll get your answer on the first try. Two weeks ago, BuzzFeed announced that it was going to use ChatGPT to help generate some of its content. Its stock price more than doubled. There are all kinds of ramifications of ChatGPT, including challenges for schools. How do you deal with an app that can spit out a paper on a topic in 20 seconds and write it at the level of you. But that may be the least of our problems. ChatGPT will displace an untold number of jobs in things like computer programming, basic email and writing functions, and even some legal tasks. CBS reported that ChatGPT was able to pass a law school exam and was able to write essays on, quote, topics ranging from constitutional law to taxation and torts. Only got a tort I know of. We asked ChatGPT to write an essay about how artificial intelligence technology like ChatGPT will replace humans in many jobs. And here is just part of what it had to say, quote, it will become increasingly difficult for humans to compete with AI in terms of speed, accuracy and cost. As a result, many workers may find themselves out of a job, either because their job has been fully automated or because they can no longer perform their job duties as effectively as AI technology can. Widespread job displacement could lead to increased poverty and social unrest as people struggle to make ends meet in an economy where jobs are scarce. Really? Let me go back to that. I think that's the most important line in this entire show. The machine has boiled it down because this is going to lead to poverty and social unrest. Hey, maybe that's why the ranchers know that there's... Where did the cows go? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, the ranchers know there's a storm coming I don't want the cattle and the sheep to turn on me. Quick, let's put them in a cage where they can't get out. If I know social unrest is coming and I'm in power and I could lose everything, I put my sheep in a pen and lock them down. Do whatever I can to coax them into the pen. That is what's happening. Unfortunately, ChatGPT is not wrong. Amazon has developed an AI robot called Sparrow that can already sort 65% of the 100 million items in the inventory at Amazon. They say it now makes industrial robots, per, more industrial robots per year than any other company in the world. They're currently testing a new drone that will start delivering smaller packages next year, delivery jobs. Uh, the latest World Robotics Report, which covers 2021, shows an all-time high of over 517,000 new industrial robots were installed in factories. And if you're still not convinced about the reality of disappearing jobs, check out the latest incredible demonstration from robotics in Boston called Boston Dynamics. Watch. Ah, I forgot my tools again. Hmm. Now, obviously, this is a very expensive robot, but it's uh, looking for tools, or is it? And this, uh, this very expensive uh, robot, as Ray Kurzweil told me, will be so cheap, everyone will have them eventually. Oh, and it found the tool. We are in big trouble, big trouble, America, and you have to decide, are you in the pen, are you in the field, or are you going into the barn? More in a minute.
let me shoot straight with you about the most important thing that um, we have to deal with, and that is life itself. And I believe you are a hero. Your donations are giving the good work of preborn the ability to save lives. Right now, these babies are taking their first breath because of you, if you donated. $28 will, uh, is the price of a uh, ultrasound at a preborn center. Now, these centers are in the high traffic of abortion zones. And um, when women walk in, they say, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have an abortion or I want to have an abortion. abortion. Preborn says, let's do an ultrasound first, just see what's, what's happening. When mom hears the heartbeat and sees the child, she is twice as likely to choose life. And because of you, she can. Preborn has rescued over 200,000 babies from abortion, and every day their clinics save 150 more. Be a hero. Give babies life. Donate the keyword baby at pound 250. Pound 250, use the keyword baby, or go to preborn.com slash Glenn. hate this damn thing. It's made for like children four and up and I can't figure out. I, this is, this is Canadian. That's what this is, Canadian. What a surprise. The windmill doesn't work. What a shock. I can build the barn. I can build the farm, but the windmill doesn't work. I guess it's appropriate. Uh, look, I have been, I've been studying this topic since the 1990s. I have talked to some of the world's uh, leading minds on this. Read Yuval Harari's uh, work and you will understand they absolutely look at you as a worker or sheep. Um, and what are we going to do to entertain these sheep so they don't rebel? Things are changing and you can change with them and you can change intelligently or artificial intelligence will change your life for you. Um, I, I'm not saying we're going to become Amish, but there are lines I will not cross. I will not participate in some of the things that they are going to be shoveling. And they're going to shovel this, and it's going to smell great, but it is what's in the floor of the barn. Okay, that's exactly what it is. It is enslaving, entrapment, and with everyone I have talked to, once the horse is out of the barn, once AI is out and running, it's not yet, but we are really good. It's right here in the middle of the doors and it's starting to run. Um, it's too late to do anything. Then you kind of have to hope for a Tower of Babel thing where God comes down and, you know, messes with the language of ones and zeros this time. Uh, right now, you can help stop it, but you must educate yourself first. Do not take this as anything but a strong warning, because it's here. Good night.